네, 잠시 후 행사를 시작하겠습니다. 잠시만 기다려 주시기 바랍니다. Ladies and gentlemen, we will begin the today's event very shortly. Uh, please bear with us a little more. 네, 안녕하세요. 바이오매스 한일 시민사회. Welcome to Japan Korea International Media Briefing on Biomass. I would like to heartily welcome the journalists and also um, the people from Korea, Japan and uh, elsewhere. Solutions for our climate, uh, Korea Federation of Environmental Movements, Global Environmental Forum, Mighty Earth, and also Biomass Industrial Society Network are co-hosting this event. And as for myself, I am also from Solutions for our Climate and I am Han Se Song. Because we are conducting this event uh, online, I would like to uh, deliver some housekeeping announcements. First, uh, when you um, log in, uh, make sure that you have your English and affiliation uh, in English. And also number two, throughout the presentation, make sure to mute your microphone. And after we are done with all the presentations, uh, we will have a Q&A session. And uh, we're going to use that Q&A session to address all the questions at once. And fourth, we are recording uh, this media uh, briefing event, and therefore you can uh, later on uh, watch it again on YouTube. Next, I would like to introduce to you the program. First, uh, we're going to have Sujin Kim, researcher from Solutions for Our Climate, and she's going to talk to us about 2050 carbon neutrality implementation plans, and also the problems uh, associated with uh, power generation biomass. Next, uh, we're going to invite over from Global Environment Forum of Japan, uh, researcher Sayuko Inuma, and also from Biomass Industrial Society Network, we will be joined by President Miyuki Tomari. They're going to talk to us about overseas and domestic biomass supply and sustainability issues of biomass power generation. Also, we have prepared uh, a uh, joint statement Japan Korea NGO statement on biomass addressed to President Moon Jae in and also Prime Minister Gishida Fumio towards the end. And uh, that uh, statement is going to be presented uh, by uh, Mr. Roger Smith uh, from Mighty Earth. Now, before we begin with our first presentation, allow me to briefly talk to you about the meaning of uh, today's media briefing. Biomass is considered as a renewable energy and uh, has been enjoying a lot of uh, government subsidies and policy supports. However, you have to cut down trees and burn them in order to use them. And uh, that could uh, create uh, deforestation and also emit a lot of greenhouse gas emissions. Especially, uh, you will be destroying the biodiversity and uh, in order to use as firewood, uh, a lot of high value added uh, trees uh, could uh, get lost. And I believe that this is also contradicting Korea and Japan's 2050 carbon neutrality goals. I think that uh, cutting down old growth forests itself uh, is destroying carbon stocks. You will be releasing carbon and uh, it will be taking away carbon um, absorption in the future. Korea and Japan uh, have been importing 5 million tons of biomass every year from Southeast Asian countries and also domestic production is increasing. The two countries have been promoting biomass as renewables and uh, have been uh, granting them with a lot of subsidies and policy supports. This is uh, indeed a misleading policy and also is not aligned with international efforts uh, to exit unsustainable biomass. For 2050 carbon neutrality, I believe that it's very important that we change this and uh, i believe that climate crisis uh, addressing climate crisis uh, through natural means uh, which is on one of the key themes at cop 26 uh, is also against uh, this biomass policies of these two countries and also uh, we have to take action immediately in order to um, address the problem of uh, being called uh, biomass climate villains October 21st uh, is International Day of Action on Biomass. And uh, I believe that it's very important that uh, we stop uh, the use of unsustainable bi biomass, deforestation, uh, climate crisis, and uh, preserve biodiversity. For those aims, uh, we've been conducting international campaigns. Now, without further ado, I'd like to invite uh, Sujin Kim from Solutions for Our Climate for her presentation. 
She is responsible for bioenergy program at uh, SFOC, and uh, she's been making efforts in order to bring about changes to biomass and palm oil-based fuel-related policies. So Kim, you have the floor. Good morning. As was introduced, I am Sujin Kim from Solutions for Our Climate. So without further ado, I would like to begin my presentation. And before I do that, I would like to share my screen. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Now I'm going to turn this into full screen. And uh, before I begin my presentation, I would like to kindly ask for your understanding. For one thing, uh, you may think that the speed of my presentation may be slow. The reason why is because uh, we are providing Korean, English, and Japanese interpretation. And therefore, for our interpreters, uh, we are going to make sure that we speak slowly. So I ask for your kind of understanding. So this is my presentation, and the title is South Korea's Net Zero Goals on Forestry and Sustainable Sustainability Issues of Biomass Energy. Table of contents. I will be talking about uh, three themes. So first uh, is overview of current state of biomass energy policies in South Korea. The net zero goal of forestry sector, the role of biomass and also the subsidy. And second, I will talk about 2050 net zero goal for forestry sector and the role of biomass. And third, I will talk about social environmental issues of biomass, especially related to imported and uh, domestic biomass sourcing. I'm going to talk about uh, the issues associated uh, with their supply chains, and uh, I will leave you with concluding remarks. Now, before I jump into my presentation, I would like to talk about uh, this picture you see here. Here you can uh, see the clear cutting method uh, used in Korea very commonly when it comes to logging trees. So this clear cutting is a method widely adopted in Korea. And for the first time early this year, it was made aware to the general public in Korea and it brought about a major outcry and uh, wooden pallets, Factories uh, are receiving those uh, logged and harvested woods, and they are used as fuels. So I will be talking about those during my presentation. So next page. Here you can see that uh, bio energy actually takes a big part uh, in uh, the source of renewables. So when we think about bio, uh, when, when we think about renewables, uh, we think that solar and uh, wind are the two largest renewables. However, um, that was not the, the case. 2018, uh, bioenergy actually took up the largest share. And uh, starting from 2019, solar PV started to catch up uh, with uh, biomass. However, wind is still minimal. Now, if you look at uh, bioenergy, we have gas, uh, we have liquid, and we have solid fuels. And today we will be especially focusing on uh, wood pellets and wood chips, those uh, woody biomass takes up about 80% uh, of uh, the biomass energy. Next page. Overview 2. 2012, uh, we introduced uh, the RPS system, and that uh, actually created a boom for biomass power or biomass energy. So the annual power generation from biomass uh, has grown to 75% annually, and The biomass 
power generation capacity in Korea today exceeds 2000 uh, megawatt. As you can see from the map here, we have uh, many power plants and uh, in total, we have 63 biomass uh, power plants and uh, we have four additional power plants under construction. And the areas marked in orange are the ones uh, that are under construction uh, and are planned uh, to be constructed. In Korea, we've been providing dual or redundant uh, subsidies for biomass, not only from energy sector, but the uh, forest sector has been providing biomass subsidies. We have Renewable Energy Credit or REC, and if you look at REC issuance and also RPS implementation compliance fee, you can see that uh, 2018, that biomass actually was the largest source of renewables. And uh, wooden chips and pallets, they've been enjoying REC weights of 0 0.5 to 2.0. Now, 2.0 would be the highest uh, weightings uh, that uh, a source of energy can enjoy. And this is uh, three times uh, the size of the REC weight uh, that uh, compared to solar PV. We also have coal power plants nearing to retire, and those are also eligible for subsidies if they use uh, biomass as fuel. Not only that, uh, subsidies are providing from the are provided from the forestry sector. So, um, Korea's forestry service provides uh, the subsidy. As you have seen from the picture earlier, after clear cutting and uh, reforestation would take place, and for that a lot uh, of government subsidy is provided. 90% comes from the government and the remaining 10% uh, from the land owner. And even that 10% uh, can be um, reimbursed uh, by forestry co-ops. So with zero cost almost, uh, you can do clear cutting and reforestation. And in order to produce uh, biomass, uh, you would do reforestation and uh, government actually pays 60% of the reforestation cost. And in order to use uh, wood pallets in different communities, if you provide uh, wood pallet boilers, then the government also would be providing uh, subsidies uh, to compensate for 70% of the cost. And there are many other types of government subsidies available. However, because of time constraints, I won't be talking about them in detail. Next, I would like to move on and talk about part two, 2050 net zero implementation strategies for forestry sector and the role of biomass. As you can see from the picture till 2050, it says uh, that uh, about uh, 34 million tons of uh, carbon uh, will be sequestered so about 27 million tons uh, of net uh, CO2 sequestration uh, using forests and uh, 20 million tons from other efforts and, and 2.5 million uh, tons are from biomass. The essence of this goal is uh, with the number of 27 million tons the biggest or the most important strategy to achieve that uh, target is to cut down older trees and then replace them with younger trees. So by 2050 from forests, the aim is to cut down the trees that are older than 30 years and then to replace them with younger trees uh, numbering 3 billion. Again, I would say that uh, this would be taking up the largest share in the 34 million tons. And uh, 27 million tons is a huge number. Using biomass to replace uh, fossil fuels 
you can also reduce uh, CO2. But the problem is that there is uh, the issue of double counting, biomass replacing fossil fuel. In other words, conversion uh, is something that uh, the energy sector would be uh, capturing. So if you um, count this again uh, from the forestry sector, then that would be double counting. Next, I would like to move on to the next page. Uh, here I talk about the issues more in detail. The first issue has to do with the 3 billion trees uh, to be planted. Um, 300 uh, million will be rather 300 million will be planted in North Korea and the remainder in South Korea. And uh, where will they be uh, planted? Well, it talks about how uh, those trees will be planted uh, in the existing forests and new forests will be only 100 million. So because you are replanting these trees in the existing forest, uh, you would have to cut down the existing trees and uh, you would need about 900,000 hectares of land uh, in order to plant those trees. And uh, 900,000 hectares is really um, a large, uh, amounting to the size of Gyeonggi-do province in Korea. And the uh, second issue is that the principle of cascading use of wood uh, does not exist. Uh, most of the domestic wood uh, are comprised of uh, young trees and 30-year-old trees or younger will be considered young and uh, they will be used for short-term cycle and uh, for low-value products. And the short life uh, is short for those trees and uh, they're low value. And another big problem is that uh, they would be causing CO2 emissions. And therefore, We've uh, looked at uh, some statistics. So on wood uh, takes up about 12.7%. Of course, uh, using sun at wood are uh, good. However, um, others are low quality or low value use. Uh, for example, pulse, pulps, MDFs, biomass. So most of the trees that are cut are used uh, for those low value purposes. I'd like to move on to the next page. The final issue I'd like to share with you is that, that uh, forest carbon statistics in Korea is not complete and the projections for forest carbon sequestration is uncertain. If you think about South Korea's forest carbon inventory, it only includes uh, overground um, biomass and does not include below ground biomass. That is why I would say that the forest forest carbon statistics in Korea is incomplete. And also the samples used are based on even aged uh, single species of uh, forests. So multi-species and variable age forest are not really taken into consideration when it comes to making projections. Older trees, uh, science, scientists say, um, absorb more carbon. However, when we make projections on carbon sequestration, uh, you will be arriving at a um, wrong conclusion that even though uh, you have aged uh, forests, they will not be uh, absorbing that much amount of carbon. And uh, we don't have, uh, if you look at also long-term ecological monitoring results, so you can see that they are not uh, really taken into consideration when it comes to compiling data. And finally, I'd like to talk about environmental and social concerns on biomass sourcing in South Korea. Wood uh, pallets used in Korea uh, mostly come from Southeast Asia, Russia, and Canada. And about 95% of them actually are sourced from overseas. So annually, 3 million tons of wood pallets are being imported. When it comes to import size, uh, Vietnam comes first, uh, followed by Malaysia, Indonesia, Russia, and Canada. 
In uh, 2018, Korea was uh, world number three wood pellet uh, importer. And as you can see, it's a heavy importer of wood pellets. Then what about uh, domestic sourcing? In 2018, domestic uh, biomass, uh, we call that uh, unutilized biomass. And we looked at uh, the REC weightings and new REC weightings were granted for domestic unutilized biomass. And that actually led to an increase in the use of domestic unutilized biomass and uh, logging and investment. So uh, it's uh, 2021 today, and the number increased uh, to 500,000 tons uh, early this year. So in just three years, you can see that uh, the domestic car pallet production has increased four times. And there is also a heavy investment on made in wood pallet production. And uh, there are currently 23 pallet factories, as you can see, Martin Green. But uh, we also have uh, three being uh, constructed. Uh, it's uh, marked in yellow. And we also have uh, one that is being planned. So altogether, uh, we have about 27 with pallet uh, factories. But uh, when it comes to biomass, uh, you can see that it uh, leads to many social and environmental issues. First uh, is that uh, they will be emitting um, a lot of greenhouse gas emissions and carbon emissions. And uh, there is also strong opposition to, uh, from local residents. And so local resident acceptancy is uh, very low when it comes to biomass uh, factories. This data actually comes uh, from KEPCO's uh, southern, uh, north, uh, north and southern, rather east of southern power company. Here you see CO2 emissions, uh, PM2.5 and SOX and NOx and partic particulates and per unit of energy. We've looked at uh, how much emission is produced and uh, in red, uh, we have dedicated biomass power plants we have uh, coal power plants that's in navy and, and in gray, we have LNG power plants. And uh, the comparison shows that biomass power plants compared to LNG and coal power plants, uh, the per unit of, of energy, there is greater CO2 emissions. Now, when it comes to CO2 emissions, South uh, East Power Company told us that compared to coal and LNG, uh, the energy intensity was 0 0.26. Rather, the energy emission, the carbon emission was 0 0.26. However, that actually did not include other factors. But if you add uh, other factors, you can see that uh, it increases to 0 0.88 for CO2 emissions. And second issue is that for imported biomass, uh, there is no customs uh, guideline. So only legal wood harvesting permits are required for importing biomass to South Korea. And uh, we also see many falsified documents at uh, customs office. The sustainability certification is not required when importing biomass. So as you can see from the pictures here, ecologically significant temperate inland uh, rainforests such as this in Canada are being cut down like this. You see uh, clear cutting taking place and uh, they're being imported to Korea. And final issue is that wood pallets are being produced uh, using unsustainable practices. And uh, for domestic pallets, I believe that uh, we have some significant REC, significant problems with REC issuance process. Uh, there is no environmental impact assessment and for wood pallets, because of uh, verification issues, uh, we see many criminal activities and 
the Korea Forest uh, Service also identified uh, menu issues, but uh, unfortunately, Korea Forest Service has no authority or legal ground to penalize those who violate the system. So um, those uh, problems are simply being covered up. So unsustainably generated and produced uh, biomass are getting certification and uh, also gets uh, issued REC and thereafter receives uh, government subsidies. Now I have my concluding remarks. So our message is clear. Large uh, power plants, especially biomass uh, power plants, I believe that uh, we should remove RECs and existing power plants and uh, plans to construct uh, power plants in the future has to be suspended. And I believe that uh, we have to have uh, differentiated uh, weighting systems for different biomass. And we need a basis for understanding greenhouse gas emissions of biomass throughout its life cycle. We also need to introduce uh, sustainability criteria and enhanced uh, requirements on sourcing and no-go zones. And we need to require a volume cap for biomass in energy mix and also set a phase out date. And finally, we believe that uh, close collaboration with importing countries in Southeast Asia for research and advocacy is required and uh, solidarity with local communities and environmental groups on planned biomass constructions is needed. With that, I would like to finish my presentation. So I'd like to thank you all for your understanding and rather your attention. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Sujin Kim. So Sujin Kim uh, talked about how biomass has been enjoying uh, a lot of government supports and subsidies and uh, was able to grow exponentially. And I believe that uh, imported biomass uh, can cause uh, many issues. Next, I would like to invite uh, over Sayoko Inuma uh, from GEF and also Miyuki Tomari from Biomass Industrial Society Network. They are also making efforts in order to come up with a sustainability guideline for biomass and biofuel. They're making efforts in order to promote uh, biomass industries uh, development towards the correct direction. So next, uh, I would like to um, invite the two speakers from Japan. Thank you very much. My name is Miyuki Tomari from the uh, Biomass Industrial Society Network. So I'd like to talk about the current state of Japan's fit system and the problems with imported biomass fuels. Overview of biomass utilization and forestry in Japan. Uh, primary industries in Japan have lacked international competitiveness in general and it had been pushed aside by imports and for many years forestry has relied on subsidies from around 2000 biomass began to receive policy support as a re renewable energy source but growth has been sluggish with few exceptions and the purpose of the FIT system, which started in 2012, was to utilize forest scraps of forest land in Japan. However, in order to add to the amount of renewable energy introduced, the scheme also promotes power generation using imported biomass. Many foreign companies are also invested in large scale biomass. And the FIT system, 
This is a scheme to promote renewable energy sources such as solar, wind, and biomass. And the objective is to reduce the environmental load, strengthen Japan's international competitiveness, and promote industries and revitalize local communities. And it started in July 2012. So the renewable energy power is purchased at a high price to increase power generation projects and electricity users bear the cost of purchasing electricity at premium. And uh, this helped to increase electricity from renewable energy sources, but there were many problems with the scheme design. And uh, it has, the system went through many changes and improvements, and now it's in the transition to FIP system in 2022. And this shows the uh, status of biomass power generation under FIT. The left hand side of the graph shows the projects in operation. And the right hand side shows the project that have been certified. And the purple portion indicates the, the uh, uh, general biomass category that is utilizing mainly the imported biomass. As you can see, the uh, most of it uh, is using the bi imported biomass. And the current problems with the biomass power generation under FIT, so 90% of the certified capacity is mainly imported biomass. And the uh, uh, fuels with sustainability issues such as palm oil and whole wood pellets are used. Life cycle green gas uh, was not taken into account. Currently, METI's uh, Biomass Sustainability Working Group is considering uh, this issue. And to increase uh, the volume, the question is what to do with the existing certified projects of seven megawatt kilowatts or more. And the uh, uh, more than one trillion yen of uh, user uh, burden is expected. Already, uh, more than 700, uh, uh, 7, million, uh, 7 million kilowatts more are certified, and what to do with it is, is a great problem. And um, as you can see, uh, since the start of the uh, fit, uh, there's a radical increase, uh, both pellets and uh, the wood. And exceeded to total of 5 million tons in 2020. They're expected to increase further in 2021. And uh, this is a long-term supply contract of Enviva Inc. in US. And uh, the, this uh, Enviva has been expo exporting wood pellets to the UK, but uh, Mitsubishi, Marameni, Sumitomo, and other uh, trading companies are the major contractees for the Enviva after 2025. And, uh, and this is the wetland that was cut down by Enviva for raw materials for wood pellets. And as you can see, the in the wetland, Uh, the forest was left uncut because it was not suitable for lumber, but was cut down because it could be used for pellets. But the uh, the forest was rich in biodiversity and served the flood prevention function. And uh, and this is. And this is the Canadian pellet company uh, and that was issued a permit. And uh, this is the uh, uh, life cycle uh, GHG emissions from biomass. So uh, wood, woody pellet and the chips and the uh, uh, Japanese and uh, uh, wood chips and, and so forth. And the uh, uh, top line is the coal-fired power 
life cycle GHG, and next is the LNG. But um, sometimes the biomass uh, exceeds the level of the uh, LNG. And right now, the government is considering the um, sustainability standards. And normally, um, the biomass is required to at least uh, cut 50% uh, 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 as compared to the fossil fuel to LNG. IEA has set the SD scenario, uh, which is the um, a scenario which is believed to be necessary to achieve the Paris Agreement. And, and the GHG emissions level exceeding 50%, meaning that those biomasses are not useful for achieving the Paris Agreement. But some of the biomasses are exceeding this level. So even at this level, biomass uh, has only very limited uh, contribution to the achievement of the Paris Agreement. So there are many other issues, which I'm not going into detail because of lack of time, but the um, biomass uh, has very limited ability to contribute to the achievement of the Paris Agreement. And that is something that I would like to convey to you. Thank you very much for your attention. Good afternoon. So uh, this is um, Inu Masayoko uh, from the um, IG Jeff, and uh, am I being heard? Okay. Do you hear me? Okay. Someone, <laughs> please answer. Yes, we hear. So let me start. So uh, today, I would like to talk about the um, uh, biomass power generation and carbon neutrality goal in 2050. Uh, following a government declaration based on the Paris Agreement, Japan has begun to move toward its major goal of achieving carbon neutrality and curbing climate change by 2050. For this reason, every possible reduction in emission is required. And this graph is basically the same at the as the one at the end of Ms. Tomari's presentation. This is based on the graph submitted to the Biomass Sustainability Working Group of Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry, or METI. And CO2 emissions from biomass combustion and land use change are not included here. Green is renewable energy other than biomass. And the middle is wood biomass and red is fossil fuel. The red horizontal line represents the SD scenario line for achieving the goals of the Paris Agreement. Imported biomass fuels have high greenhouse gas emissions at the processing and transport stages shown in blue. Even if the emissions from combustion and land use conversion were not counted, the Paris Agreement targets could be met only by domestically produced wood chips from forest residues, and imported biomass would significantly exceed this line. Further, because trees absorb CO2 as they grow, and because trees can be regenerated over time after harvesting, it is considered that CO2 emissions from the combustion of woody biomass do not need to be counted as emissions. In reality, however, CO2 is emitted when wood is burned. This table compares greenhouse gas emissions per unit of energy 
CO2 emissions from burning wood are even higher than those from lignite, which emits the largest amounts among all coals and double those from natural gas. Wood has a higher carbon emission factor than coal. So these figures are reported by the National Institute for Environmental Studies to the IPCC. It is a scientific fact that wood biomass emits more CO2 than coal. This graph compares GHG emissions from wood burning and land use conversion to fossil fuel emissions. Combustion alone, orange part, is much higher than fossil fuels. And the difference is very large in the case of conversion of natural forests to planted forests, which is the gray part here in this graph. At present, the conversion from fossil fuels to renewable energy is in progress, but unlike solar and wind power, biomass power generation which is a thermal power generation, needs to be re-examined whether it is really better than fossil fuels and whether it helps to control climate change. This is a graph of wood biomass fuel consumption from 2015 to 2020. At present, domestic thin wood and wood residues are the largest in volume, but the uh, PKS yellow and the imported pellets, which is red, are increasing significantly. The uh, residues, uh, which is the uh, uh, green, uh, was the largest um, uh, at the beginning, but they remained constant and hardly grew. And imported wood pellets have been have seen an eightfold increase from 2015 to last year, although growth slowed last year, probably due to the COVID-19. Japanese trading companies and US producers have signed contracts to import more than 3 million tons of wood pellets. If realized, the volume would reach 5 million tons. That is just an imported uh, wood uh, pellet alone. And these imported wood pellets emit large amounts of GHGs when produced and transported overseas. And when the amount co of combustion is counted, they are a huge source of GHG emissions. The FIT Biomass Sustainability Working Group, for which the Agency for Natural Resources and Energy serves as the secretariat, has been uh, ca calculating the life cycle of GHG of bio biomass fuels and is also considering how to handle carbon stocks in forests. However, the study is done mainly for new fuels and it is not clear how to deal with the wood biomass, which has already been certified. Also regarding carbon stock change in forests, the secretariat suggests direct land use change, for example, only when land use is converted from forest to agricultural land is to be included. It means that they will not count decreases in carbon stocks by reasons other than changes in land use. For example, short-term increases in emissions due to the logging and transport of wood from natural forests and conversion to planted uh, forests. This is not consistent with the IPCC GHG counting method. The UN is also calling on OECD countries to phase out coal-fired power generation by 2030. I believe that the promotion of biomass power generation, which emits more than fossil fuels, will hinder the efforts of decarbonization. So this is a call from the UN by 2030 to uh, phase out the uh, coal-fired power plants, uh, but the biomass emits more um, GHG than um, fossil fuels. And um, I'm going to uh, omit this slide uh, due to time constraints. So uh, this will be the end of my presentation. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much. So FIT uh, system was in, explained and how this led to the promotion of biomass and biomass actually leads to greater greenhouse gas emissions. Thank you very much. Next, uh, we would like to share with you Korea Japan, uh, Korea Japan NGO statement on biomass. It was signed by 12 uh, different NGOs in the Korea and Japan. So I'd like to invite over Mr. Roger Smith, uh, project uh, manager of Mighty Earth. Uh, he is currently working in Japan for decarbonization. So you have the floor, Mr. Roger Smith. And thank you very much. <clears throat> So uh, as mentioned, my name is Roger Smith and I work for Mighty Earth uh, in Japan. And in the earlier presentations, we saw the huge increase in East Asian biomass demand. And this is driven by government climate and renewable energy policies. And globally, protecting forests is essential for addressing global warming. Governments and industry have made pledges to halt deforestation and restore degraded forests including in the SDGs and here in the New York Declaration on Forests, which both Korea and Japan signed. However, despite these pledges, government policies are still negatively impacting forests. Korean and Japanese energy policies are not just increasing logging of forests in Korea and Japan, but also in Vietnam and Southeast Asia, Canada, and the United States. And we don't have much time to go into details today, but Mighty Earth issued two reports in English and Japanese that outlined harms from increased biomass production. The first report from December 2019 uh, covered the Southeast United States. And the second report from June of this year focused on British Columbia, Canada. And we're planning to release a revised version of this report in Japanese in the following weeks. So what do we do about all of this? So as biomass use is driven by government policies, these policies and subsidies urgently need to be reformed. Uh, today, we're issuing a joint statement to President Moon and Prime Minister Kishida in English, Japanese, and Korean. Uh, I won't read it here, but let me at least cover the recommendations. So the first recommendation, uh, it's also all sources of renewable energy need to reduce greenhouse gas emissions over the next two decades. Even if new trees grow back to replace trees cut for biomass, we don't have 50 or 100 years to wait for them to remove carbon from the atmosphere. The critical period for stopping climate change is the next two decades. So the second is for existing power plants. And we want to see a halt to the construction of new electricity only biomass power plants. And we're concerned that as the problem with biomass is getting worse each year with every power plant that's approved, uh, we really need to stop them now. And then thirdly, for the existing power, power plants, for existing biomass power generation, both countries need to first require the calculation of life cycle greenhouse gas emissions. Then they need to set emission limits that rule out any biomass power that worsens climate change over the next several decades. And in addition to greenhouse gas limits, they should require that the biomass fuel be subject to strict sustainability standards to protect forest ecosystems. And the last point is that we need to use forest products for their highest and best purpose. So simply burning wood for electricity is one of its lowest uses. And then finally, we'd like to see the leaders of Korea and Japan not only halt reliance on destructive biomass, but announce new policies at COP26 to protect global forests and stop deforestation. And with that, I'll end my presentation and thank you for your time and feel free to contact me via email about this or the reports that we put out in the past. Thank you.
Roger Smith, Nim, and Thank you, Roger Smith, uh, for your presentation. Next, uh, we would like to open up the floor for Q and A. Those of you uh, who has questions, please raise your hands. Um, and if your name is called, you can unmute yourself. You can also post your questions in the chat room. Therefore, um, if you have any questions, feel free to share your questions in the chat room. Uh, so far, we don't have any questions. I think that uh, our journalists are still thinking what to ask. Well, because of time constraint, uh, I think that some of our speakers may not have been able to share everything that they have prepared. So please, you can utilize this time in order to say what uh, you were not able to say. Or um, just me, Kito Murray. I think your your presentation uh, has been cut short. So if you would like to add a little, a few more words, uh, please feel free to go ahead. So this, ne. Ano, ja, Tomari san, mo si yoroshikereba sono. So Tomari san. Can you also touch on the question that the uh, uh, if the uh, wood is burned only for electricity uh, power generation, that is very inefficient. Yes, and there are different purposes for using the wood biomass, but the our main target right now is the biomass uh, used only for power generation. Biomass power generation is not very efficient in terms of the uh, generation efficiency. If for fossil fuels are 40% to 50% of e efficiency. However, biomass is not as efficient as that. Maybe uh, the latter half of 30% uh, or so. Uh, in, in some cases, 20% or even less than that. On the other hand, uh, if the uh, waste wood is used for heat purpose, the more than 90% of the efficiency is ensured. So uh, if the uh, waste wood uh, is used for biomass uh, for heat generation, uh, that might be an idea that if um, the biomass is, is used, it should be cogeneration for power and heat because that's uh, more efficient. Inuma-san, you skipped one slide about the uh, recommendations to the uh, uh, working group. What about that? Okay, then let me... Yeah, this is a very domestic matter, but uh, let me briefly touch upon these. And uh, this is the proposal of us about how to think about the uh, uh, forest uh, carbon stock. And we recommend that the um, GHG estimation should, should assess not only land use conversion, but also the reduction of forest carbon stock in the short term, uh, in the short term. Uh, and the current guidelines, LCA GHG guidelines should also uh, should also should not see the a biomass uh, which uh, for which the uh, uh, carbon stock cannot be uh, uh, sequestrated uh, within the projected uh, period. Um, so that should be maintained. And also the um, decrease in the short term of the carbon stock should also be assessed. Not just um, in times of the land conversion, but the, uh, when the uh, forest is cut 
um, the uh, carbon stock decreases, and that should be assessed. And uh, these are not uh, duly discussed uh, while uh, the permits for new construction for biomass power generation uh, uh, are being given. Therefore, uh, these discussions uh, should uh, take place uh, prior to giving the permission. That is the proposal that we are making to the government. It looks like the... So uh, may I question, uh, may I pose one question to Sujin from me? So you reported that in Korea, the old um, trees are cut down to be replaced with younger ones. And you mentioned 30 years, but in terms of forest, 30 years is not old. But Dian, how you know, people see this issue in Korea? You're doing Hi, Sayako. I, I wasn't able to um, hear your hear the interpretation. I think there was a Do you mind repeating your question again? Hi. So the um, uh, trees are cut down at the age of 30 years, uh, but still it's considered young in terms of forestry, right? Um, you know, 100 years or sometimes grow uh, beyond 100 years. So when trees are cut at 30 years, uh, that is too uh, early. And uh, how do people in Korea see this particular issue? Yeah, um, so people consider this as um, as absurd. Actually, a lot of people do not buy that in. Um, obviously, that um, yeah, thirty years old trees um, still have are very young. Um, their DBH would be like uh, fifteen centimeters or something or less. Um, sometimes ten centimeters, really, depending on the area we're you're in. And I think that. Um, that um, it actually created so much um, confusion and also uh, fury among uh, citizens in South Korea that has led to um, the uh, governmental and civil um, society committee on um, carbon neutrality goals for forestry sector because this policy does not make sense in uh, even um, for um, for, for yeah, regular <laughs> regular folks so who are looking at it, and people are seeing um, there uh, the forest cut down uh, in their neighborhood and and clear cutting very uh, devastating results, and they're seeing um, um, seeing that results already um, in their communities like um, lane slides and everything happen after heavy rainfalls, and um, that has become a, a huge issue here. Um, I think I am going to call up on uh, Ms. Uh, Lin uh, from uh, Korea Federation of Environmental Movement um, to to give a, a few more um, comments on this um, on this issue of um, um, 30, yeah, three billion uh, tree planting. Plus, uh, maybe if she could comment on the um, from the international solidarity point of view, um, we're doing this event. Um, to, uh, to promote solidarity among um, civil societies um, and uh, communities around the world to raise awareness on, um, on biomass, uh, impacts of biomass, um, if she has any comments on, um, on uh, our, our next steps. I would like to thank all the speaker for their insightful presentation. 
And I would like to uh, make uh, some quick remarks about uh, biomass. Today, we celebrate International Day of Action on Biomass. And I believe uh, that many countries in Southeast Asia have been also hosting and holding webinars. And uh, we also have financial institutions like ADB. And uh, they, we've been urging, um, and actually, actually uh, these organizations have been urging uh, the, to stop uh, the investments uh, into large-scale biomass power generation. And we were not able to come together for this uh, event, and uh, we actually have a separate uh, webinar. But uh, we have uh, many biomass producers uh, with us, and I think that going forward, I hope that uh, we can collaborate uh, together so that uh, we can also talk about uh, supply chain uh, risks in the, the production countries, and also the conflicts with the local communities, and also potential climate uh, change issues. There are many uh, partner organizations of KFEM out there, and therefore I think that um, if we can come together for future initiatives, I think that it can be very helpful. Thank you. 네, 감사합니다. Thank you very much. Do we have any further questions? Yes, uh, as Herin just mentioned, we have uh, solutions for our climate and also Mighty Earth, Jeff of Japan, Biomass Industry Society Network. These are the co-hosts of today's event. And so far, uh, we actually came together and including Mighty Earth, uh, we've been uh, sharing many efforts over the years because I believe that when it comes to forestry and also energy policies, there are many similarities between Korea and Japan. And of course, uh, it would have been great if uh, those similarities were positive ones. However, you know, there are some similarities that are not necessarily encouraging. Therefore, um, we, the co-hosts, are actually the organizations with same concerns. So we have come together to uh, plan co-campaigns and co-initiatives. And uh, today's event is um, one example of that. And as Hedy mentioned, uh, going forward, perhaps uh, we can also address the issues of uh, the production countries uh, who are at the upstream of biomass production so that uh, we can do some thorough analysis on uh, the climate supply chain uh, related issues and also share that uh, with the general public and not only with the general public, but also to the policymakers. I think that we need to raise your awareness. So our goal is to spread out even further going forward. I see that uh, there are no further comments or questions. Uh, and therefore, I think that it's time for us to wrap up. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for staying with us uh, till now. And all the materials related to this event uh, will be made available through our website. Uh, Hanse, I would appreciate it if you can share the links. Now with that, I would like to conclude to today's international media briefing on biomass. Thank you very much for your participation. And thank you all the presenters and speakers today and interpreters today um, for your hard work. And